Okay, so eyesight test done successfully. Yes. Okay, so first of all, welcome to RJ8. Thanks for taking part in bringing us. Yeah. Um, yeah, you didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, didn't feel it, were it? Yeah, alright. My name's Graham, I've been with you all day. Um, in the background, you see Rob that's just washing the pot. <laughs> You've got him trained. Well trained. <laughs> well trained. <laughs> okay, CBT, that's what you're here for today. What does it stand for? Compulsory basic training. Compulsory basic training. Yeah? Compulsory basic training. Okay, so. First of all, let me just tell you, it is a course today, yeah, it is a training course, safety course. So it's not a test, there's no pass, there's no fail, and there's no time limit on it, yeah. So, if we're actually struggling, we don't get to the road today, then we will invite you back in a proper yeah. Okay, compulsory basic training. Made up of five parts. Yeah. Element A, introduction, which will be a little bit of the history, a bit of helmets, clothing. It's okay. Element B, that's when we go out and have a look at the bike that we're going to be riding, uh, get to know the controls of it, a little bit of bike maintenance. And you won't be doing that, will just be demonstrating what we should be checking weekly and daily checks, okay? Element C is what you come for. Let's ride the bike. We'll be riding the bike on the yard, doing a series of exercises, getting ready for the road, yeah? Make sure that you're safe enough to go onto the road. Once we've done that successfully, we'll come back in here then to the element D. So it's just a quick start. Let's get stuck onto the road. Yeah, different things that we traffic lights, junctions, roundabouts, gradients, things there. Yeah. Um, and then obviously a bit of the highway code. Oh, we've all been reading the highway code. Especially you, Lee, yeah, if you're thinking about doing your the theory on Monday, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Alright, so a little bit, a few questions on the Highway Code. Um, again, it's all Q&A, a lot of it, yeah? Um, as we said, it's not a test. There's no pass, there's no fail. We've just got to make sure that you're safe to go the road, yeah? And then element E is a minimum of two hours on the road, radio contact. Any questions? Mm. Okay, a little bit of the history. Yeah. CBT was brought in, it was introduced by the government in 1990. There was one reason for that. Prior to that, anybody that passed a car test or got a car license, yeah, on their car license it stated that you could ride a 50cc. Nobody had ever been on a bike before. Hence, there was a lot of accidents. Just the fact they could carry pillion as well. No well, like. Can't you still drive a 50cc if you license? Grandad license. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so after 2001, yeah, anybody that went into a car license had to then see his CBT. Yeah, so CBT was introduced in 1990. The accidents then was reduced by 50 to 70 percent. What? That's quite a lot. <laughs> That's quite a lot. Well, what are our, our age today? Um, to drive safety in the road. Right, to make sure that you contribute to road safety. Make sure you're safe enough to go onto the road. Yeah? And also, the last one is to validate your license to the CBT certificate, which is a B0196. Yeah? And that will validate your provisional license. Don't mind me, I'll leave that out in a minute. You're listening, Mark. Yeah? Okay, so, what's the what's the legal requirement then to ride a motorbike? Uh, learning plates. What else? Um, insurance. What about for yourself? For yourself. Um, helmet. 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 Unless you're a Sikh. 
Yeah. Now the other lifestyle, myself life. How long do you think that would be? One year. What about the Annie? How long do you think that longer would last you? Three years. Three years. Alright. A little bit more expensive. Yeah. Fiberglass. Probably start from £60 upwards. Probably £200. Okay. Fiberglass. What sort of shelf life on that one? Five years. Five years. Good guess. Was it? Five years, hopefully. Is it a good guess? I don't know. <laughs> Not a bad guess. Yeah, yeah five years. years. Yeah? Next material. It's like a dry composite mixed with everything. Yeah? Got stronger. Things start talking to you all the time, up to all the time and time. Yeah? I know I dropped that. <laughs> So, shelf life. That one's gone from three years to five years. Eight years. About me, Anna. Seven. Okay. Seven. Five years. Five years. Five years. Five years on the helmet. Yeah. The maximum is five years. We also talked about uh, it has to be approved, didn't we? Yes. So that is the British standard kite mark. In the back of that helmet. It's in blue. That exceeds the limit of the standard. Nice helmet, expensive helmet, but it exceeds it. If there's a one to go on there, it being green. That meets the required standard. Yeah? Okay. Okay? So if I told you that that label there, the British Standard Guide Map, went out of circulation seven years ago, would you buy that helmet? No. You wouldn't, would you? Because yeah, the maximum is five years. Five years. So two years. Correct. Five. Okay? So, what was introduced then was the European Standard, EC2205. Yeah? So you look at every helmet, if you're buying or using your own helmets today, aren't you? Yeah. Your helmets will have 2205 in it. Yeah? yeah? If it hasn't got a sticker on the outside and it's come off, you'll find that on the actual strap itself, it will be on there as well. Alright? Or inside the helmet. Now we mentioned about dropping the helmet. What would happen if you dropped a helmet? It might not work. Might not work, would you wear it? No. Right. Because the, the power side is inside, they only take one, yeah. one impact. One impact, when, yeah. When that spawns, then in so the even though that, that helmet's probably been dropped on the floor here, if you look at it, it's not really marked, is it? No. But you don't know what damage has been done on the inside. Yeah? Where would you buy a helmet from? Um, the ancient, what about the ancient? Dealership. You buy it off eBay? Yeah, but as yeah, long as it's got this. No, no. <laughs> you don't know the history of that yeah. helmet, do you? If it's new and it's got the certificates on it, it's still not. It's still don't, do yeah. you? You don't know if it's been dropped on the way to your house in a park. You could or go or to an approved shop now, buy a helmet, put it on your bike, on your seat, you fasten your jacket up and it drops on the floor, would you wear it? No. no. Take it back in the shop and take another one. Run mm. three hundred quid. <laughs> yeah. So I always buy them from an approved dealership. Yeah. Mm. Remember, you've only got one of those. So buy what you can afford. All right. So got the different styles. Got the different materials. Yeah. Talked about fastenings, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, three different fastenings. You can tell me now which fastenings you've got, are you today? What about this one? 
easy ones. Yeah? Ratchet. Yeah? Put it in. Release it. That's probably the easiest one. Is yours like that? Yours is like that. Is yours like that? Yeah. Okay, so you've got the ratchet one. Nobody's coming in the car today, have they? But if he was in the car, get out. It's like a seatbelt. Pump click. Yeah? Uh, a little bit more difficult one if you're wearing power helmets today. Strap goes through both of them, comes back, over one, and back through, next thing Release it, that little red tag there, helps you to release. Put your finger underneath it. Well, three different types of fasteners. Right. <coughs> then when we talked about buying a helmet, what do you sort of fit would you say? Should I be in your head? If, 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 yeah. Um, you should feel it. You should be able to get it to see things. It's nice and slow. Yeah. Because yeah. after a while, you're moving your head. Yeah. It's just going to wear or it's going to mould to your, your face, really. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a little bit. So you don't want a helmet that's too loose to it. Nice and slow. Um, visors. Shops and buy this muck off. But it costs you, doesn't it? <laughs> what does tap water cost you? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, okay. <laughs> charges somebody, tap water. <laughs> yeah. Charges yeah. somebody. <laughs> yeah. Still have to pay for tap water, yeah. <laughs> Alright, what happens if you got a scratch on it? You can't get it off. You can't get it off. What happens in the weather? Wet weather especially. Your, your brain's gonna stay on the top. It's of gonna it. stay on the crack, isn't it? So your vision's gone, hasn't it? Yeah. So what would you do? Replace the visor. Replace the visor. Yeah. Um, this sort of weather again, driving along, steams up. What do you think should do with your visor? Oh, oh, just, yeah. just open it a little bit. Look at there, three. Yeah. All the steam's gone. So you buy all these anti-mist sprays and costs money. Yeah, pin lock, another one. Mm, just like double blade. Yeah, another pin lock as well. 